Welcome to Thrive, Transformative Strategies for the New Year, the CLA virtual conference poised to redefine your approach to success. Today, we unite under the banner of innovation, ready to forge new paths in personal and professional growth. Each speaker today brings unique insights to propel us forward. Get ready to explore innovative strategies that will enhance your growth journey in 2024. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am thrilled and excited to have this opportunity to speak with you today at this virtual conference. Our session is entitled Black Belt Tactics in Business, a theme that might initially evoke images of martial arts more than of boardrooms or market strategies that we have as a business owner. Yet, as we delve deeper, you'll discover that the disciplined path to earning a black belt in martial arts harbors profound insights and methodologies that are remarkably applicable to beneficial and in the, in the business world. In martial arts, achieving a black belt, it's not merely about the physical strength or the combat, the combat side of it. It represents this journey of mental fortitude, its strategic thinking, continuous improvement, a deep-seated respect for oneself and others, these principles, when translated into business tactics, can equip us with a unique and powerful framework for navigating the complexities and challenges of today's dynamic business landscapes. Today, we'll explore together how the core tenets of martial arts, strategy, agility, resilience, a Zen mind, as you hear Zen always get brought up, we'll go over what that talks about. It can be seamlessly integrated into business practices. Each of these elements offers a lens through which we can reevaluate our approach to leadership, to decision-making, to team building, and to personal development. As we embark on this journey together, I encourage you to keep an open mind and consider not only the external applications of these tactics in your professional life, but also the internal transformation that can help you from within. By the end of our session, my hope is that you will walk away with actionable insights and some more strategies that will not only enhance your business, but also enrich your personal growth and resilience. Let's begin our exploration our exploration of disciplined, strategic, mindful approach of a martial artist that can help you unlock new levels of success and fulfillment in business and beyond. So let's talk about the first few guys. When I go over this, just because I, you know, I earned a black belt in 1987. That was the first black belt that I earned. And it was a my it was mind changing and physically changing all at the same time. I was a younger man back then, and I've done this consistently for years now. And with that being said, some of the first things people ask about being a black belt is this, right? Oh wow, I bet you can really kick kick someone's ass, or they you say, wow, you must be really disciplined. Those are the two things that come out as a as a as a martial artist. So dis discipline and consistency. Achieving proficiency requires a constant practice, focus, and dedication. So you got to have these. You got to have dedication. You got to have practice. You got to have focus. And a lot of people are motivated, and there's a difference between motivation and discipline. Motivation is what gets you started because your mind said, I'm, I'm motivated. There, maybe there's a life change and you're super motivated and life gets in the way and all of a sudden our motivation goes away and self-discipline has to take over. And you have to have the same thing in business. So in business and life applications, apply this by setting clear goals. You got to create a structure. You maintain a disciplined approach to task and responsibilities. In business, this could mean regular evaluations of your strategies or your operations to ensure alignment with objectives. In personal life, it might involve setting routines and promote growth and well-being and have these private victories that you have, okay? Public victories is what we get when people are, we're on stage and everybody's clapping for us and everybody's rooting for us, but the public victories, guys, when you set your mind to do something that you have consistently worked on basics for and you have mastered the mundane, all the work that nobody sees you do to prepare you for what you're doing in your business and in your life is when you sit back and you say, man, I am proud of myself today and that you don't need outward 
uh, acc accolades, you need to have the inwards and say, hey, man, I'm proud of myself, but this is where I need improvement. So that's the first part of it, right? That's the discipline and consistency of things. You have to be consistent, okay? Because without it, you just – consistency uh, improves. It's like sharpening a sword. The more consistent I practice, the sharper my sword. So when I have to use whatever it is I have, whether it's for self-defense purposes or business purposes, whatever my basics were at that particular time, I need to use that. And mastering the mundane, I always say this in class, right? The more you drill, drillers make killers. It's the same thing in business. Drillers make killers. All right, so that's the first one, discipline and consistency. Let's talk about adaptability and flexibility. A skilled martial artist adapts to their opponent's tactics and changes their strategy accordingly. So a skilled martial artist, I'm going to talk about this first, okay, so I can get you guys' mindset of a black belt or of a fighter per se. Let's talk about this right now. A fighter is always evolving, right? You need to stay flexible in your strategy. You need to be ready to pivot when circumstances change. This could mean adapting your business model in response to market trends or being open to a new way of thinking and to problem and personal challenges. So let me tell you how a fighter looks at things. Let's say you're in the fight, you're in the ring, or you're on the jujitsu mat, and, you, and you're in a fight, and all of a sudden things are happening to you. Maybe you're taking the punch. Maybe you're being overwhelmed. It's the same in business. It's the same in life. A fighter does ways in a fight. He either A, if he's getting, if he's getting fought, he'll change his level. Maybe he's got to go down a little bit and he's got to move. Or he's going to change his angle. Maybe he's going to step off. He's going to step out of the way. Or we need to change our distance. It's the same thing. It's the same strategy in business, in life, right? If we need to duck and dive, that's it. If we need to change our angle to go a different route, that's what we need to do. If we need to have, create distance, maybe that's what we need to do. All those things are the same in life as it is in, billet, <clears throat> in business. So you need to adapt to what's going on, and you need to be flexible in the way you're going to change your strategies. So you understand that, right? We have distance. We have angles, and we have levels. Isn't it the same, right? It's the same as when we're doing business. You're going to get hit. Every, every day, we're taking a one-two punch. Every single day. And we need to ha learn how to adapt to that, or we're going to die in the ring. Got it? And so we need to be flexible with what we're doing. So hopefully, that kind of gives you a little bit of feedback of what that looks like. The next one, guys, is situational awareness. A martial artist, for sure, is if there's one thing that I have learned over the years, and if you've ever been with me, I'm very aware of my surroundings, where I sit in a restaurant, where I sit in a movie theater. How do I protect my family when I'm, a, I, I'm out and about? Do I walk along the street and let my family or my girlfriend walk on the other side of me so I'm the one that's in the, in the way of danger? I am very situally aware of what I'm doing. I surround myself and what and also being aware of your surroundings and the opponent's position and the intentions of what you're doing is crucial. So I'm very intent in what I do. Very intent. In business, you have to develop this keen situational awareness. You need to buy staying informed about the industry that you're in. You can't be left behind. I mean, look at today's market, right? We have AI. We have all this stuff that we didn't even have five years ago. Five years ago, we're Googling stuff. Now we have all these other trends, and you got to stay on top of it. you got to be situational aware. A competitor's actions. The changes in your personal environment. Maybe your personal environment has changed. Did we not just go for this COVID thing a couple years ago, and we had to – we had what I was just talking about. Did we not have to change angles? Did we not have to create distance? Did we not have to do something else? We had to be situationally aware. What are my competitors doing? I better not be on. I, I, the day COVID said shut down is the day we went online. We had an online thing go up and we had online classes. We didn't even think twice about it. There's no way we were going to, to shrivel up and die. And, and we were essential as far as I was concerned to stay people physically fit. 
This helps in making proactive decisions rather than reactive. You hear that? You got to make proactive decisions, not reactive decisions. I say this often on the mat, you guys, and listen to me. Tell me if you agree. <clears throat> I tell my students all the time, if you're defending, you're losing. So you got to get on the offense. You can't be reactive to everything that happens to you. You have to be socially aware and ready to, uh, you know, combat whatever's coming at you. So if you're defending, you're losing. It's the same thing in a fight. If 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 punches are coming at me, or I I have to duck and dive, and I got punches coming at me, or I'm on a jujitsu mat, and somebody's on on trying to attack me from here, and I'm and I have to defend everything that's coming at me. I can't defend everything that's coming at me. I just can't. Right? I can't punch. I can't do three or four. You've seen fights, three or four, five, six, pop, boom, pops are getting to you. Hook punches are coming, and you're all this, and you're defending everything. Are you winning or losing when you're defending? You're losing, right? You can't lose. There's a couple of things I tell my students all the time, right? Losers look down, winners look up. Cowards retreat, okay? Winners go forward. Same thing here. Don't be a coward. Don't be a loser. Look up, move forward, get on the offense. Efficiency and leverage. That's my next one, Efficiency and leverage. Martial arts uses the least amount of effort in the maximum effect and using leverage over strength against opponents' weaknesses. Man, I can't tell you how awesome this is, right? When you focus on your strengths and find ways to leverage them for maximum impact in your career or personal projects, use resources wisely. Uh, look for opportunities to gain advantages. Maybe on the mat, we're looking for, hey, you make one little mistake, and we're going to capitalize on that, right? I make one little mistake, somebody capitalizes it on me. It's the same thing. We have to be efficient with our moves, and we have to use leverage. So I have to use leverage instead of muscle. Now, just because I'm big and strong, there's other people that are bigger and stronger than I am. And if I just use strength all the time, and I don't use leverage, I lose. So you got to learn how to be efficient in your moves and how to use leverage so everything comes at you becomes not a weakness but a strength. That's what's so beautiful about the jiu-jitsu mat, right? It takes a little person to be able to understand how he can use a fulcrum and leverage to beat the bigger opponent. It's the same thing in business, right? So in business… When you, when you want to focus in, you want to use resources wisely, and you want to look, look for opportunities to gain advantages. Maybe it's technology tools. Maybe it's the AI we talked about. Everybody hates it, but it's here, and it certainly can help you. Maybe it's automating the mundane task. We talked earlier about having good basics and mastering the mundane. Can you imagine if we, had, we found something that automates our mundane, which we already do, I'm sure, like a flow? Like we get an e-lead and we have an email and it goes through this process and we're automating our mundane tasks, making us more efficient. We're leveraging that tool to, to gain us time and work on our business, not in our business. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Resilience and perseverance is what I want to hit next. Martial artists overcome setbacks and continue to train even after defeat is part of the journey. This is going to be one of my favorite things to talk about here. Building resilience by embracing failures as learning opportunities. Persist in the face of challenges, knowing that each setback, every setback you have, it provides a valuable lesson that can contributes to your growth and it contributes to your success. So I, you, let me give you the fighter's rendition of this, man. Tell me if you, if, if you can't relate. You may not be a martial artist here, but you are going to relate to me if you have a business win. You, so when you come into this, watch. When I'm going to build resilience, I'm on the mat, and I got to overcome setbacks. When I first started jujitsu, I remember, man, I was getting tapped out all the time. I was just losing and losing. I was getting angry and angry and angry. And it also it often says, hey, the mat will build your character. Business will build your character. 
I don't believe that. I believe it reveals your character. Your character is what, what it is. You have to refine it. And when that happens, what happens is you get better. So you have to be able to overcome these setbacks. And so I tell my students all the time, where, when you're in the fight, I want you to imagine there's somebody on top of you and they're, and they're pressuring you and you got all this pressure on you and you just want, you just want it to end. And so you're starting to succumb to pressure instead of finding a way out. How do I find a way out of this pressure? Do I just quit? Do I quit right before I win? Or do I find a way out? Do I find that little wiggle room that helps me find the next, his next weakness so I can leverage and I can get myself out? Am I just going to succumb to pressure? Isn't that the same with life? Haven't we had pressures every day? And, we are, and we're like, oh my gosh, I can't, I just want this to be over. I want it to be over. And we don't find a way out. We tap out. And once you tap out, it's over instead of finding a way out. Now, on the flip side, sometimes tap out is this. In, in jiu-jitsu, when we're trying to work on things, maybe I need to tap out. You've had a better day to me. You were the better man. And I'm saying when I tap, it's like I'm tapping to you saying, hey, man, thank you for showing me my weakness. I really appreciate that. You are building my character, and you're going to help me fail to the top. And so you got to tap out sometimes because you're just making the wrong move. And then you got to tell your, your training partner, thank you, man. Thank you for showing me my weakness. That's the beauty of the tap out. It shows you your weakness. It needs to sharpen the sword. Don't succumb to pressure. All right. Learn from your failures. Fail your way to the top. And don't ever stop uh, just because you feel that, that pressure. You never know when the other person is about to quit. They don't ever know what you are. So we, we say this sometimes on the mat, right? If I'm tired, I'm hoping you're, you're dead dog tired. If I can't take another breath, you better be dead. That's how I want to think when I'm going after. And that's how you have to have your business too. You have to be, you have to have some resilience. You have to embrace failures. You have to have them as learning opportunities. You be persistent in the face of challenge. Know that every setback is, is another one that's like, every setback is a set for a comeback. And don't forget that. Let's go to the next one. Continuous improvement. Man, a martial artist, there's always room for improvement, regardless of his skill level. I talk about this all the time. Oh, Mr. Cox, what rank are you? What rank are you? That does, you listen, it, I don't, it doesn't care two shits about how many ranks I have. It does not care. I do not care, right? Uh, I have high ranks in some martial artists. You don't hear me talk about it too much because I'm going to tell you right now, all these higher ranks, whether I have this eighth degree in his and a fourth degree in that and a first degree in this, uh, a brown belt in this, it does not matter. My little belt doesn't matter. It matters to me because it was, it was my work journeys. But I can tell you this, what a higher belt is, it's really good at first degree black belt material. You've gotten so good at what you do that it's part of you now. You don't so you to get good at something, you have to train. When you train so much, it's not that you train it anymore. It's become part of you. And then you start sharing it. And you got to have this kind of mindset, this, this, this Kaizen mindset of constant improvement. You know, adapt a mindset of this continuous learning improvement. Regularly, regularly seek feedback. I seek feedback all the time. Anybody that knows me, I ask, what could have I done better on that speech? What could have I done better in that class? I'm still a student every week. I get on the mat. I learn a new skill. Even though I'm the, I'm the main instructor here, I've gotten kids that I've started when, since they were three or four years old who have their own family. And we are now, we are now almost peers and workout partners more than just coach and stuff. I might be able to give them some good life lessons and stuff, but when it comes to the martial artists, our peer level is starting to get up there and I get to make them workout partners now, not just students. And I get to see that. Now, if your ego is too engaged and you can't do that in life, that's a problem. You learn, 
stay humble or get humbled. That's what says on, on my door when you walk in my school. You stay humble or you will get humbled. And that's true in business, and that is true in life. I, it doesn't get any truer than that. The next thing is, guys, on this continuous improvement is strategic planning and execution. we got to have some kind of – matches are often won in martial arts through strategic planning and anticipating somebody else's move, right? I'm telling you right now, when you anticipate somebody else's move, on the jujitsu mat, when I said before, right, you got to be on the offense. If you're defending, you're losing. And I'll tell you something else that happens. Somebody cannot defend what I do better. I can do better what somebody else can defend what I'm doing, meaning it's either the element of surprise or I have strategically planned and I have watched what you're doing. I know what my opponent's moves are, and I'm going to counter that. You need to develop a strategic plan for your career, your personal goals. I want you to anticipate potential challenges. Prepare strategies to address them. Execute your plans with precision, adjusting as needed based on outcomes and feedback. Man, this is a fighter's mentality, man. Entrepreneurship is a fighter's game. You get out every day as an entrepreneur, you're in a fight every day. You need to have strategic planning and you need to execute your plan. You think about your plan and you execute. That's what you need to do. Um, it's, not, it's not will you be challenged. It's when you're going to be challenged. And knowledge, my friend, is how you're going to combat that. Don't think it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. And you need to make sure that you're focused in when it does. Strategic planning, execution, know your opponent. Get out there and be the fighter. You be the winner. Now, the next one, guys, is this. Zen, have a state of calm, focused, and present. And cru it's crucial for a martial artist in combat to have a Zen mindset, to know how to breathe, to know how to succumb to all this pressure that's coming on you, and you stop and you take – some deep breaths and say, okay, I, I'm getting ready to go. We're good to go. Have that Zen mindset, you guys. Listen, man, time's coming up. So as we conclude our exploration of integrating martial arts strategies into business and life, let us remember that journey to mastery. Whether in the dojo or the boardroom, it's paved with discipline. It's paved with resilience, strategic foresight. The principles of martial arts offer more than just physical prowess. They provide a framework for navigating life's challenges with grace, with agility, and unwavering focus. I urge you to embrace these timeless strategies in your daily pursuits. Approach each challenge with the mindset of a martial artist, of a fighter, poised, prepared, and ready to adapt. Let the principles of discipline, adaptability, and continuous improvement guide your decisions in business and personal growth. Now, I invite you to take that first step on this path of strategic mastery. Reflect on the areas of your life where these principles can make a profound impact. Set a goal, no matter how small. These embodies the essence of a martial arts strategy. Whether it's adopting a new approach to problem solving, committing to continuous learning, or simply cultivating a more mindful focus, presence in your daily task, let the goal be the beginning of the transformation journey. Put your goal ahead of your mood. Together, let's harness this power of martial arts strategy to not only achieve our business objectives, but to elevate our personal lives to new heights of success and ful fulfillment. The path to black belt mastery in business and life awaits. The time you embark on that journey, the time is now. Don't wait. Remember something. Losers look down. Thank you for engaging with this session of Thrive. As we continue with our next speaker, remember the insights and strategies shared are steps towards your transformative journey this year. Stay connected for more empowering talks. The Connected Leaders Academy is committed to your ongoing journey of growth and excellence. Remember, this journey is just beginning. Let's keep the momentum going. Join our community at www.connectedleadersacademy.com.